United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Michael Hogsett? Here. Renee Lilly? Here. And Sean Smalley is excused. Michelle Sumner? Here. Larry Whitaker? Here. Lisa Woods? Here. Richard Benaway? Don't know. Brian Biss? Here. Bruce Connor? Here. Gary Daigle? Here. And Joe Grossman is excused. Debbie Hamilton? Here. And Janine Hartley? Here. Okay, do we have any media present tonight? Or else on? Actually, that camera. Oh. Oh. Uh, anybody in the audience would like to speak about any, anything on the agenda? Uh, ask for approval of the minutes from May 13, 2024, for the renewal budget. I'll make a motion. Okay. I second. Been moved and seconded. Uh, second. I moved and seconded. The motion's been made, moved and seconded for the, May, uh, the voting on May 13, 2024, urban renewal budget. And we're going to do tonight, we're going to start this differently. Last time we didn't show hands, we actually she called it out. But because we're going through so many budget items, so many votes, mm -hmm. we just decided that we'll have a show of hands. All those in favor uh, of the motion, raise your right hand. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, budget review, 10. Welcome, Budget Committee, Tammy Corbett, Finance Director. I would just like to remind everyone, if you would please make sure your microphones are pointed at you and you're speaking into the microphones for minutes, comments, questions. It will be very hard to reconstruct who said what if we don't do that. So thank you very much. Um, you have in front of you the Urban Renewal Budget booklet and includes the City Manager's Budget Message, which we talked about last week. That's very exciting things, and the project in urban renewal continues to proceed. And uh, the budget, the narrative itself, in here. Um, as I was going through it today, doing my last minute check, and I would like to apologize in advance for any errors that I'm going to point out. Okay. Um, as you come down that first page under resources, there's debt proceeds, and then there's, and I'm on page three of the narrative. Page three of the budget, first page of the narrative. That uh, paragraph right after debt proceeds says 65000 is budgeted to provide funding. That is an unnecessary paragraph, okay? It's kind of already covered, and I would like to ask that you just draw a line with it. That's what I'd like to do in the approved budget. So, uh, this describes our resources for the general fund, uh, repaying um, the city of Sutherland. Larry pointed out that there's $2 million under other lending source in the general fund that is not identified. That is correct. We have not tracked down that funding source, nor will we until we know for sure that we're going to need it. I have um, some inquiry out with Uncle Bank in terms of their public lending, and they have to put it back to me. So that has not been dialed down. We're going to be, of course, shopping rates and finding the best uh, best bang for our buck up, and we won't borrow it for the action or the city hall renovation. Um, going down that narrative page again, page three, uh, I was going to turn it over to Christy to just do a little bit of explanation on the project for the Urban Renewal General Fund. So some of the projects that we have, um, 
um, some of the projects that we have going are the ongoing um, sod improvement. We have several that we have approved and we're just kind of um, waiting for them to finish either their designs or begin construction. Um, the downtown parking lot, we're currently up to bid on that and that will close on June 6th. So hopefully we get some good bids and we can move forward with the construction of that. Um, we might see that develop. The um, Everett and Calapuya property that we are currently working with a developer. We're um, securing an agreement and bringing them to the table to see, make sure we're all on the same page with our agreement proposal. And then we also have um, the revitalization grant of the bank building. So that was a $200,000 grant that was received from Oregon's uh, Main Street program and through the downtown development group as the applicant the city and urban renewal dollars matched it, so it's 60,000. And with that, it was for the asbestos abatement, the uh, HVAC unit, roofing, and sprinkler system. So that should make the building habitable uh, in order to get businesses into the building as well as the residential component with the businesses. Um, right now, we're, I'm going to say, about halfway through the spending of that, and so we will continue to move forward. The sprinklers are what's left, and there will be remaining funds available for the over budget. The grant folks that want you to pursue spending those grant funds, and so we're submitting a uh, proposal for the facade of improvement to go on that building. So with that, we should um, have improved light on the outside as well as the ability have being habitable inside. So that answered one of the questions that I had received on the renewal budget. We have the additional one. She touched on the capital outlay with the parking lot. That's going to be wonderful to have that paid. And then you can see on page five the numbers that are associated with that narrative. I have a question. Okay. I didn't think of that. Oh, no. But regarding the parking lot, is that will that mean that the um, individuals utilizing those parkings currently will they be asked to not park in the newly changed parking? That are all behind that area. Yeah, so it'll be customer parking on there. Customer parking, not for owners. Mm -hmm. and not for neighbors. Work for car. Yeah. Leave it there for day. Okay. We'll be posting signs. And we'll so have for, something enforced. Yeah, to enforce just it. like the library. Okay, moving on to the debt services fund and payment of debt. Interesting tip. Uh, tax and finance uh, can only be spent to pay debt, which is by an urban renewal agency. And that's by statute, Oregon statute. You borrow funds from whatever source you borrow them, and then you repay them with the tax funds that come that is paid from the property tax. So you'll see what our projection is. We have interest earnings on that money. Uh, don't anticipate any material or services over here. It's only to repay debt and interest. And you will see the $65,000 fund that reference underneath the debt service there and leaving money in contingency. And any funds and fees will not spent will carry over to the subsequent. So page seven is the number of paid. Lines up with that. You will see um, the consistent format of the budget has two years prior actual numbers, one year prior actual numbers, the current year's budget, the projected year end numbers, and then the proposed budget. And that's so you can have a comparison, good comparison. So you're not looking at numbers just in a vacuum, trying to figure out where we are. There needs to be some sort of basis. Question? Yeah. Like someone to make a motion to approve the general fund 
for the urban renewal budget with correction. I'll make that motion. I'll second. I will second it. Approve the general fund with corrections. All those in favor, right hand. Any opposed? No, we have to do that. Yeah. I guess so. Okay. So I gave you the review of the whole thing. So if you had any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Otherwise, feel free to remember the motion. Oh. Okay. So we need a motion then to approve the debt services fund for urban renewal. A second. A second is that approve the debt services fund for urban renewal 24-25. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion passed. Okay, so we approve the general fund, the debt services fund. Now we need a motion to approve the budget, full budget uh, for Urban Renewal 24. I make a motion. We approve the Urban Renewal Budget for 24.5. Second. Who, who had it? Debbie? Debbie? Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Any opposed? Passes. We don't need to, yay, we don't need to continue the meeting, so the meeting is going to continue. We convene the meeting for 2024-25 budget review. Uh, it's called the order, and we roll call. Michael Hogsett? Here. Renee Lilly? Here. John Smalley is excused. Michelle Sumner? Here. Larry Whitaker? Here. Lisa Woods? Here. Brian Biss? Here. Connor, Bruce Connor? Here. Gary Daigle? I'm here. Joe Grossman is excused. Debbie Hamilton? Here. Janine Hartley? Here. For public comment, if anybody in the audience wants to speak about agenda items, oh, excuse no, me. introduction of media. No, we don't have. <laughs> so, if anybody wants to speak uh, about agenda items, that would be a good time. Oh. Ask for approval of minutes from the May 13, 2024 city budget meeting. Ask for a motion. Twenty twenty three. Yeah. Okay. Moved and seconded that we approve the minutes for May 13, 2024 city budget meeting. Uh, all those in favor? Any opposed? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we uh, are calling you now for a public hearing. Open for open public hearing. State Revenue Sharing Fund. Welcome. Good evening, Budget Committee, Finance Director Karen Silbert. State Revenue Sharing. Um, cities and counties that levy property taxes are eligible for periodic distributions of money raised state taxes on motor vehicle fuels, tobacco products, and alcoholic beverages. These distributions from the state of Oregon are based on formulas that consider population, property taxes per capita, and income per capita. Before a city can share in this money, the governing body must hold at least two public hearings, publish notice, and adopt a resolution or ordinance if they elect to do so. At these hearings, citizens must be given the opportunity to provide written or oral comment on the possible use of the money. One of the hearings is held right now by the Budget Committee, and the other is held by the governing body. These rules are part of the ORS 
and are spelled out in the Oregon Department of Revenue local budgeting law publication. For the current fiscal year, those revenues are projected to be approximately 95,000, which is down slightly from what we had budgeted. And for the new budget year, it's based on projections from the state, they're holding approximately the same level. For a city to receive a proportionate share of these revenues, they must provide at least four of the four services that government is um, charged to provide. We actually provide all seven. Those services are police protection, fire protection, street construction, maintenance and lighting, sanitary sewer, storm sewers, planning, zoning, and subdivision control, and one or more utilities. So that is what constitutes the core service. Okay. Uh, open meeting. Is there any public comment? Any questions? That will close the public meeting. Next is the 2024 25 budget review, and we'll start with General Okay. Well, um, you have in your hands a document that is. Uh, very fun to put together, and I'm sure it's riveting reading for everybody. Um, I'm going to skip. I'm just going to start on page four, and I'm going to skip through this first part quickly. If you have any questions, you know, let me know. But the first part is just introduction and basic giving you an overview of what's going on. The page four is where the money comes from, is where the money goes. Last year, our budget was about 34 million. This year, it's 40 million, and that is because of grants and construction projects that we have going on. And you will see the staffing there has got a couple asterisks beside it. And on page 12, you will see there's that additional FTC is added in the public works department. Uh, we want real market value from the county website, the debt outstanding on our tax rates per thousand. And you've got some graphs following uh, property tax revenue and population growth. We just went past 9,000 as far as Portland State University is concerned. Got a chart of accounts, and if you look since uh, if you pull this up online, those are hyperlinked, so they'll take you to specific points in the budget. It's a very budget message. And Jerry, did you want to add something to that? Because you had talked about kind of a format in terms of questions. Well, in your microphone. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we we talked as staff throughout the month about how intuitive this group is. I never had I I I sent a message to the League of Burning Cities. I've been doing this for 31 years. I've never had a budget committee so uh on point and interested and wanting to be involved. So we want to do more to keep you involved. But I also want to say that a number of the questions that you have uh, aren't necessarily related to you approving the integrity of the budget. But we want to capture every question that you have. So don't hesitate asking a question. But I may say, hold it, time out. Our recorder is going to record that question. We're going to do many workshops with you guys throughout the year and bring you along with us when we do the budget. And our very first workshop we're going to schedule in the next couple of months is going to be with the League of Oregon Cities. They are the association that oversees cities. They're going to bring a trainer out here and they're going to teach fiscal integrity and uh, local budgeting and finance in in some detail. And so uh, some of you some of you called and have asked questions and Tammy will come to me and say, how should I do this? How should I respond to that? And they're great. But at the same time, I would say some of the questions aren't directly related to your role as a, approving this budget. But we don't want to lose out on that. You're going to say something that we might benefit from, that everybody should benefit from. So <clears throat> Brian, Janine, Lisa, Michael, any of you have a question, don't hesitate asking it. But I may say, time out. Let's save that question for a workshop. And Janine's going to record them all and we'll have them. And we'll have the League of Ring of Cities and our auditor participate in answering some of those questions. Is that okay? Especially for you, you're the you're the money man, and I'm really come to appreciate uh, uh, you're the one that gave me this idea 
that hold it, time out. I don't want you to be discouraged and think we're trying to tell you we don't want to hear your question. I just want to put it in the proper uh, arena, you know. So your job tonight isn't necessarily get into, and no offense, uh, is we're going to be signing the budgets. I mean, we're going to be signing in the parking lot, you know. We're going to answer those questions right here. It's really easy. But some of them can be, with with some of you, can be fairly complex and require a, a better response, and it's not necessarily related to you approving the integrity of the numbers of the budget. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I just want you to know we want to hear every question, but we're going to put them in a category where we can respond more appropriately. Thank you. Sorry, I'm going to ask a question. <laughs> Only if it has to do with this budget. Yeah. <laughs> well, the key achievements for the prior year was the seismic upgrades. Is there a seismic level on the Richter scale that the buildings are supposed to be able to handle as far as a earthquake of a 5.0, 6.0, 7.0? Did the engineering firm tell you that? You know, we can follow up later. We haven't alluded to that in the course of the break. We just know that uh, we're very concerned about old, older public safety buildings and felt that ours fit the criteria and but we'll have Janine write it down and get yeah, you an answer yeah, for right. it because I don't even know that and I'm all knowing. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like we have it once we have it somewhere. Okay. Thank you, Janine. Yeah, that's not to do because never in the history as a secretary of the budget committee had any role other than a title. Yeah, no. So now congratulations. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I would like to point out that we did complete a new phone system switch over for thinking under those key achievements. This is the second run we've made at it, and it was successful this time. We're very pleased, and BFN was fabulous, as well as our IT folks were really good in support. So we've got priorities, and most of our priorities this year are continuing work that we have started. It's been a, a slow roll on some of these things. They were they were just initiated, but we just received the seismic break. So a lot of these things are similar verbiage. General fund budget is a little bit higher. Uh, it explains what those are made up of. Property taxes, franchise fees, and other revenues that may be used at the discretion of the city council. And um, I always make a note in this regarding the American Rescue Plan monies, which have been helpful for working on infrastructure, parks, public safety, homelessness, and economic de development at the direction of the city council. That had be completely obligated by the end of 2024, which it is, and will be spent by the end of 2026. So those were short-term funds. You don't want to do anything that you're going to try and sustain. Jamie, yeah, I mean, can I, I, I want to just tell you a little city manager cheating comment. If you go to page 26, I and mean, go to page 28. So if you want to know if the budget is in trouble financially, Compare your contingency and unappropriate ending fund balance uh, with what we're going to finish year year in and what we're going to be proposed. So we're not going broke, and that's one of the first things all city managers do when they go to quiet another city. They go look at those two numbers because those are the two numbers you would need that if you run out of money, you have to operate local government from July first to October until you got your tax revenues. And so if you didn't have any residual funds left. You need that amount of money. So we need about a million dollars to operate city government from uh, core city government from uh, July 1st to uh, uh, October. So anyway, that was related to budget. So I thought I would share my great wisdom. <laughs> so we skipped a lot of ground in there, but that's also with stuff that was reading for your edification with vision and priorities and what budgeting in the city of Sutherland by the Oregon Revised Statutes, what that looks like. and um, I hope you all appreciated my cute little flow chart and the fund organization structure, which is now in color. Um, you know, important thing. And then you've got pages 23, 24, and 25. 23 is just a real big picture look at everything. And then 24 is the expansion of the resources, 25 is the expansion of the expenditures and ending fund balance. Um, and then if you get to page 28, where Jerry was talking about, I 
would like to note a correction on the yeah. end of paragraph charges for services. There was one of the 23 24 wordings that didn't get changed to 24 25. So that will be one of the changes as I go through the approved budget. Thumbnail sketch there of the general fund overview, the highlights of the type of revenue, and then the expenditures by department below that, and then our contingency and unappropriately funds. And what you see behind that supports that page right there. Revenue, that next page, page 29, is an expansion of all of those categories. Talking about current and delinquent taxes and the different kind of intergovernmental revenue, the different kind of franchise fees. You will note that we're predicting the electric franchise fees to be higher based on what they're looking like this year. Electric car charging, thank you. Um, if you turn the next page to page 30, charges for services, you will see under city fees that there's a, a large number projected for the year end this year. And that is because of the Murphy last payment in lieu of taxes payment that we had talked about at a city council meeting earlier this year, about $136,000 that we had not budgeted in our street funds because based on the data from the county, that was going to have stopped and they were going to start paying tax, uh, property taxes again. They were in the enterprise zone waiver for a while. And it was one year longer than was projected. So we brought that hill in here. And then we've also had quite a bit of development and development and worksheets and subdivisions. Those, the processing costs of those go into the city fee. You will notice that I've only budgeted 20,000 because that's a number that we budget, budget very conservatively. Very conservative. If we have good development, it's going to be up there. It's going to be up in the 100,000. But if not, so we don't want to base our budget on something that might not happen because of inflation or external factors. Uh, miscellaneous, you will see that the fines and penalties increase significantly this year. And that is basically law enforcement getting out there and uh, tracking people down and then court. Yes. I think I have a question going back to page 28. Um, okay. I don't know if it's going to go between the police and fire, the police have almost four times as many employees, but the budget's still at twice as much. Why is that? Well, because police have 18 full time, fire has five, but police is twice. Why does that work? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. How about if we get to those sheets and we'll compare them okay. one to one? Does that sound good? What? And moving on into the departmental the breakout on the general fund, mayor and city council. I'm leaving the same because it was quite good to spend all that money this year. The attorney, we're increasing the cost. They did have a bit of a price increase and with activity, the increase in activity, we are finding the need to be able to call them for advice, have them write leases or review contracts or output. So the increase in activity requires an increase. In managers, the bump in his budget under material and services is again because of his position on the OCMA board. The travel involved there. Um, reporter. A lot of accomplishments and things listed here. Only first full year as the city reporter. But if we adjusted that last year, we moved human resources over into finance. And this is the city reporter and community engagement only. And so there were some line items here that you see they don't have any budget nor any expenses for the last year, like printing and advertising, drug testing, writing up, and those that are still with it. Finance, we have again, we brought the HR 
Steve Silver. And that's a really good team. Good question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. don't understand it. But under for the uh, it's on page 35, if you have the 2021-2022 for the salary and wages of 154 and now it's like half of that. Tell me where you're at again. On page 35. Okay. And their salaries and wages because it's only one person. Okay. Yeah, exactly. it didn't specify that in the thing. So, so this, this there used year to be two. and last year, gotcha. one person. But right. back there, there was two people. And okay. They took her away from me, but yeah. they did. So Debbie used to be there uh, along with Diane. And, uh, but when we, Reorganized staff and realigned skill sets. We threw a risk management and human resources and put it within finance. And so now I'm just stuck with her. Gotcha. Okay. He's very fortunate to have Melanie right now. <laughs> yes. As well as Colleen, who is HR and payroll. He's not very far away and he can, you know, bounce back and forth. <laughs> uh, they both keep him in line. Some good things. I don't for get my <laughs> A lot of possible upgrade of utility meters. We've just got a lot of irons in the fire in finance. Um, you will notice that uh, first costs are going to increase, and that's because I had two brand new people just last year for the first six months that they are in public employment. You don't take hers on them. And so for half a year for two of those employees, there were no hers. The hours end up getting reported back, but you don't. Hey, so it made a difference in what that projection was for. And uh, let's see, our auditor, we have a price increase with the auditor. So we'll bump that up. The software maintenance support, we've got an additional subscription again to comply with new GASB, that's what it's called, Government Accounting Standards Board. They are adding standards all the time. Um, so uh, the audit gets much more owner. The auditor recommended that we get this debt book subscription that tracks leases and software. It's just an interesting thing. So they just they want to show it. They show it as an asset and then they also show it depreciating out as a liability. It's basically a wash on your financial statement. But it's costing us eight thousand dollars a year for the subscription and additional auditor time to deal with. I want you to know I really complained and drug my heels as long as I didn't do any good. Parks. Karen, you want to come talk about your budget? Or? Good evening, Aaron Sloan, Public Works Director. Um, so, page 38, Sparks Facilities. <clears throat> and um, Sammy and I worked real hard about keeping this whittled down. The notable changes are, you might notice, are um, the community building maintenance, we're going to do some gutters and paint doors and stuff on there. Uh, contracted services, cleaning crew that Contracted with, um, taking on a few new buildings, so we'll have 20 or 25 there. And, and uh, we lowered the I 5 interchange maintenance a little bit because we're doing that in house instead of uh, contracting. Uh, on the next page, page 39, um, chart maintenance went up. Um, that's because we have our regular temporary uh, worker and we'll hire a couple extras this summer. And then also a little bit in there for the Ford's Pond maintenance. So that's, what, that's why we see a jump there. And other than that, everything's pretty straightforward. Does anybody have any questions about the uh, parks here over for this budget? I had a question on the Ford's Pond meeting. Read that there's going to be a toilet 
some point, some area, part of the area in the back here, a traditional um, restroom being built. Is that is city water? Is it a septic? There's a uh, there's a regular restroom there with mm -hmm. running water, and that's city water. Mm -hmm. And so those restrooms, they they are on a what we call a step system at the city, and that's where it goes into a septic tank or a holding tank. So it goes into the sewer. Yes, it goes into our sewer. There may be down below where the eventually where we're gonna have a boat launch kind of a dike. That may be a bit too okay. there. So yeah. sure. Thank you. I think it looked like came out and was concerned about having a maintenance fan there. Right. Is that that what we're going on this time? So um Yes, we put extra money in the parks maintenance budget. Pardon me. Right. So we may also hire during this fiscal year a permanent parks position. And they will be, if that happens, then they'll be out there as well as um, currently it's going to be handled by temporary work. So Potentially, like, is, is there be a budgeted proposal for someone to hire? Yeah, you'll see that in the public works. Public works, not parks. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And yeah. when the restrooms online, are we going to see the portable post hold? Yes, sir. I mean, the expense of having the service post will be that'll be gone as well. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a little bit of a mistake. <laughs> More questions? So we are getting somebody for a port pond. No, not someone exclusive to port pond, but we'll have extra workers on this summer, temporary workers. There were one gal. Yeah, and we'll she bring, did a great job. Very good. Then we'll have one or two um, seasonal people this summer. We're still trying to complete that project, so it's still kind of. So, how much do they, for like June through August, how long will the. How long, will how long do the temporaries last? As long as we need them. Oh. Yeah. Uh, during the fall, we start, yeah. start having some um, more intensive work to be done, and so we might. One of them on through that fall, those fall, her or plus her. So you still have the gal. Mm -hmm. So she could push. She could, she will, yes. We'll be out there. Sure. Her Any other the development director and talk about that budget. So, Mr. Gilbert, hey, development, um, we have our hands in, well, in your nosy. Um, <laughs> so, uh, the projects that um, Aaron's talking about, we kind of, we all work as one big team, so working in partnership with the Port Pond, um, the Salt toilets that you were referring to is part of an Oregon State Marine Board grant. And so we're currently, we've received in, uh, the budget is a match for a $10,000 permitting grant that we received from Oregon State Marine Board. The next phase will be, uh, so that's where the wetland takes time. So once we get through that process, then we will move forward with the grant for the construction. And now install vault tournament restroom with the boat dock with the dock and cage park. Um, that is one of the projects listed here. We have multiple um, projects. We dabble in the seismic um, with the police and the fire. We have uh, what's called the arch room, which is the all road transportation system. That will be two flashing beacons that we will, in this fiscal year, you will see them under construction. You may have recently noticed that uh, Mardonna and Abby's that there was some surveying done. So that's the key locations on where those two additional questions will be. Yes. Um, 
There's um, a buildable lands inventory as part of a housing project, the infrastructure portion. There's been um, kind of the housing capacity analysis, which has led to our partnership with the Department of Land Conservation and Development to have um, more directed us to a buildable lands inventory. So based on our growth and seeing what inventory is available and where our residential needs are in conjunction with yeah, it just hit me, and I want you guys to know this from the bottom of my heart. Community development is one of the hardest working departments in the city and significantly understaffed. Yeah, and community development is in charge of building, planning, engineering, economic development, and uh, planning, engineering, Long term and project management, and so they it, it, how it, how they work is, is imagine a cruise ship manufacturer who's making building a cruise ship. They're building the cruise ship, and when the cruise ship gets done, then they hand it over to the ship's crew, which is Aaron. And they have so much on their plate. I'm a little worried about it, but I just want you to know that I'm pretty proud of where they come from and where they're going, but. Uh, at some point, if we can come up with more money, I'm going to propose another staff person for them. <laughs> so one of the other um, major projects that you may or may not have heard about is Waste Street Improvements. If any of you have built Waste Street, you feel like you're going to fall into the street um, or the underneath. Um, so we have finished the design, the engineer design of it, and so we're applying for a $3 million grant with uh, ODOT, the Safe Routes to School program. So fingers crossed that that comes through and then the construction, we will have a portion will split out according to that, with funds between here and urban renewal and um, whatnot. So I bet you. <laughs> um, the downtown plaza parking improvement. So the sidewalks going on North State and wrapping around to the parking lot on first uh, is part of the budget, I mean, out to bid. And we have also the beginnings of the Dakota Street traffic signal and working with ODOT and moving forward with uh, the engineering once we get everything kind of aligned appropriately. And recently, you um, council had just approved the USDA grant, uh, which was pretty much where the pass through for the grant for the food. Uh, composting and waste reduction. So that's going to be through uh, Source One Serenity and Southern Sanity. So there's a, kind of a partnership amongst all of them. And then we will, you ready for it, Larry? Yeah. We'll move forward with a parks master plan. So our parks, we have a very active committee. And so once that is one of our big projects as we move forward is get a master plan of our existing parks and the development of them, what people want to see, and so we'll probably be seeing I'll just kind of help create that. And so that just touches on a little bit of what we do, but if you have any questions. Make a comment, the reason that the master plan is to go off for grants, have to have a master plan. Right. Uh, Twenty-five years. Twenty. Twenty years. Yeah, Twenty is a maximum. You can do it sooner if you're about. Or just Or you may want to amend it because you had an opportunity. It's not natural time. You can't get money for it, so you reconvene the process and add it to the master plan. Readopt it by resolution, and then you can go apply. That's kind of what we did in the fourth time. So I'm going to introduce police chief, but before I do, I would just like to point out that if you were to look at uh, police, the number on the police budget and the number on the fire budget, the personnel services, uh, police is two and a half times of what the fire is. Yes, they are more than a six. They have eighteen. But there's a different structure of pay structure for fire guys. And I'll let them explain. I just 
you pointed out that the total budget there's a lot in equipment expense. Uh, fire guys are using older equipment, putting a lot this of this is just the now. This has nothing to do with equipment. Right? Not the front, not the front page. The front page was the total budget for that department. So when we get into it, uh, if you would, if you want to look at page fifty-one and page sixty. We'll see where the personnel budget. And part of the personnel services along the fire is the volunteers that they pay to go out on runs, and also that they're paying a staff bill. Of the they, the volunteers get paid. It's a reimbursement, small reimbursement. Essentially, the fire department's three and a half million. I mean, the police department's three and a half million, and the fire department's 1.6. I, I was just looking at the difference in employees. Got four yeah. times many employees, but not twice the budget. Yeah. So that's what I was looking at. Yeah. Now it's Different variables with the kind of equipment, by the department's equipment. And so the, the kind of shift that they pull, I mean, we're talking 24 hour shifts and paying different in terms of how working rules are, all those things. Chief of Police. Good evening, Trent Mills, Chief of Police. <clears throat> That's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, there's some things that have changed um, with, we're going to add um, an eight foot tow car this year to reduce some of the maintenance costs and to kind of get some more life out of our fleet. Um, small increase to protective gear. Uh, we have some bulk group best to buy this year. Uh, they kind of cycle through. Um, I've got a grant to cover some of that, uh, but we got an increase this year. We have quite a bit actually purchased. And of course the prices of those went up. Uh, we added um, some ALPR technology this year. Um, as one of the council goals to lean on technology a little bit more. Um, so we added that. Uh, that took about $11,000 worth of those cameras. Uh, we actually decreased our uh, vacation property cleaning from 25 to 20. Uh, we increased it last year because we thought we'd be more of a hit on the RVs, uh, towing those and, and disassembling those. Uh, we haven't quite seen that yet. So. We reduced it this year. We'll kind of play it by ear um, in the future. Um, office equipment, uh, that's part of the, the seismic grant. We're going to have to obviously buy more equipment uh, for the offices, for furniture, things like that. So that hopefully comes around sooner rather than later. Um, the other only thing we did put aside was um, there's, there's talk of um, changing our radio infrastructure. Which means we'll have to go from analog to digital, um, but we have to keep both analog and digital uh, because of the type of towers we have and the kind of terrain that we have. Uh, so, the county's currently looking at that, but if that does happen, uh, we had to put some away uh, because each radio is spread about $5,000 a piece. We've got several of those to purchase, um, as well as the, uh, the uh, radios that are in the cars, the mobiles. Um, what we did on, on the budget, you can see that if you look on there, you'll see where you know, the control car, average control car is $88,000. And you're probably thinking that's too much. Um, that's going to go with all of our gear as well. That includes the repeater systems, uh, which are like six, $7,000. Uh, the new radios, which are about eight now, dual bands, um, as well as all the upfitting. Um, and we removed some of that from our, our pet reserve. Cars purchase it all at the same time as the saving and have it replaced on a maintenance schedule. Good question. So, if the county goes to um, a, a different radio system and the city has to keep the old system, how will that translate in terms of your officers being able to utilize the old system? Will it still go through dispatch or just go through a different way? Yeah, if the, if the change is made, mm -hmm. I'm pretty certain the change is going to be made. Um, then we're all moving to it. It's not going to be, you know, we won't be stuck, antiquated. We'll be with technology and we'll be moving forward. Um, 
I don't know what the financing of that will be down the road, but we need to prepare ourselves in case we're hit with a, a ninety thousand dollar bill to change the radios over like right now. Um, so we're just making sure we're just that. Question. Yeah. Are you experiencing any areas that you have to cover that you don't have cell phone coverage or, or dark zones for you? I was in a recent county meeting and that's one of their challenges is going out from Shannon Lake. They have a lot of area where they they have no radio for their, their yeah. staff. Yeah, it's pretty common. Um, there's only a certain amount of towers for cell phones and uh, in this our terrain, there's not a really way to get around that. Unless you have some sort of you know, pattern on satellite. Um, that's what the cost prohibitive. Have you looked into any satellite technology? Um, yeah, but they're not stationary. So it's still going to be the same hit, hit and miss depending on their orbit and everything else. So you know, it's all been talked about. But ultimately, that decision and that, that system. So we'll see shortly. Uh, we can't continue the way we're going. That's why I'm making contingencies to make sure that we have the equipment. Um, so we're not stuck. That's that's what I'm Not a lot of the time because with volunteers comes liability. Um, we put I don't want to put a volunteer in a dangerous spot. It seems like we're always in one, like fire. But um, there are small things, you know, like um, if we need to have a work crew or something like that. As if it's a, a work crew that's not violent, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe somebody to oversee them if they're doing community service. And that's pretty much all I have that's really changed in, in my budget, unless you have any further questions. Yep. Okay, so this Okay. Municipal court is pretty simple. Not much has changed. So, you have any questions about the municipal court? One question: If we have somebody who becomes a guest of the county, yes. Through your police services, and you shouldn't take the lodging fee. Yes. If they're convicted of a crime, they just charge that to so pay the city back. Um, not really. Um, we have to pay it out, run, obviously, because um, that's negotiated with the county as part of the, the jail fee rates. Um, as well, just like same thing as the dispatch rate. Um, on the back end, if they do have fines or something, we do we do recover some of that for sure. Is that a fee we can charge them? It, I suppose you could on the back end of it. They're already getting charged for the crime that they committed anyway. Um, that's why there's a bail set on those kind of things. Um, we could do restitution, things like that. Um, but it's usually out of the norm. That's probably cool. Yes. Okay. Thank you. He went over both the regular operating budget and the police reserve budget. We'll talk about that briefly when we get there. So it's kind of been a different order in the book today. He's Mike Lane, fire chief. He will talk about his budget. That's a good evening, Mike Lane. I'm the fire chief. I just want to know that. We've actually been very busy this year. Um, we, should, we secured some funding, grant funding, 2.4 million for the seismic. Um, we secured a wildland type three heavy brush engine from the state fire marshal's office. Um, we have ordered, thank you, Council. We've ordered our new fire engine, should be here sometime in August or September. Hey. Um, just recently, once again, second or third time, no? yes, sir. we secured what's called an upstamping grant from the State Fire Marshal's Office. 
uh, it's 35,000 that allows us to hire two uh, people per day temporarily during the fire season in the summer. Um, and our students and our volunteers that come in and work for us, uh, they really enjoy that. And I enjoy having them there because having that additional engine staff takes quite a load off of our main fire crew. So page 61 is mostly our budget. 61, 62. Uh, our M&S stuff really didn't change a bunch. However, I'll point you down almost to the bottom where it says maintenance contracts. Those maintenance contracts are contracts that we have to do annually to service, to service some of our equipment. We have to test our pumps, we have to test our ladders, we have to test our air compressor system, we have to test, 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 test. Um, so we, to be a little more transparent, we pulled that out of equipment maintenance. This equipment maintenance now is maintenance on our fleet, mostly. Um, and that's, I mean, these are very expensive fire engines and ladder trucks and water tenders. Our ladder truck, unfortunately, is 30, not years old, 32 years old. Um, very expensive. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, repairs, if something goes wrong with it. Um, so we're babying it. Uh, we keep we keep applying every year to try to get a new ladder truck from FEMA, from the federal government. Um, unfortunately, they're about a million and a half dollars now. Uh, when we started a couple years ago, they were just a little bit under a million. So that's how much prices of everything have gone up. So, uh, so we did move our, our maintenance contracts down there to the bottom. And that's pretty much it. So unless you have some questions that can be through here, you will have answers. Uh, are you on the second page? Second page, yeah. You know. yeah resident scholarship. We have nine uh, scholarship students that the city pays UCC to, to help pay their tuition. And in turn, those nine students work at the fire station daily. They actually tell me, I have they answer somebody else's question over here. I have five paid employees and three battalion chiefs that work 24 hour shifts. I have Chief McGar, who is my division chief of training, logistics, part time emergency management, and every other thing that he does. He does a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Scott is my assistant chief. He's half time, and I'm the fire chief, and I'm half time. So those three battalion chiefs that work 24-hour shifts, we encourage our volunteers to come in to work with them, you know, because nobody wants to see one guy on fire. So we encourage our volunteers to come in to pull shifts with those folks. And those nine scholarship students, in return for their tuition, they come and work 10 24-hour shifts for us. So for that scholarship, they're working 240 hours a month, basically. Riding our fire, driving us, they do everything. Hey, question Where does the ambulance transport come from? Where does the ambulance transport come from? We don't have ambulance. We do not have ambulance. So, uh, Umpqua, Umpqua Valley Ambulance is the local private uh, ambulance company. Most of the time, they are stationed out at our station. We have a contract with California, which is a neighboring district out to the west. Uh, in return for that, we get to utilize their fire station. Upwa Valley rents part of that fire station from California. So most of the time, that ambulance is at that fire station. If we have a call in town and they leave, go to Mercy, the next one's coming from Roseburg County or from Winchester. Thank you. You're welcome. Do they ever move up when when's it going to um, I, I think they're just moving up to the 129. I mean Roseburg's had them respond into Roseburg from the 103. And it's like, you know, at least kind of move. And if they're coming from Roseburg or places farther away, we always have they have an aim district two has an ambulance in their station at Winchester. Oh. that we can always just cancel the other one and call it oh, if it's okay. a critical call.
Oh, wait, we don't need to do a book right now? Okay, we're here. Okay, okay yep. Page 67 is the fire reserve fund. And we budget pretty much every year $165,000 to be transferred into our fire reserve. Now, like I said, fire engines and ladder trucks are very expensive. Uh, so this year you'll see 670000 budgeted for the new fire engine. It's supposed to show up in August or September. Uh, we, with council's assistance, we budgeted $40,000 to purchase equipment to put on that new fire engine. And the $13,000 down there, I think, Tammy, is a grant map because we put in for tons of grants for everything. Equipment, vehicles, everything. So if we had to put in for a $130,000 grant to buy new radios because of what the county's doing, we have to budget the grant map. So that may or may not be. Y'all have the reserve fund. The non-departmental budget there. This is the things that don't directly pertain to one of the general fund departments. We been told by the county and city insurance services who is kind of a conglomerate that carries most of the insurance for the county and the county, city of Oregon. That we're going to again have an insurance increase so that the um, projected. $10,000 cover our liability and property insurance this year. No, I'm going to have to just let you go. I'm sorry, page 60. There's two. It's too risky. It's too risky. You're first. You're not going to help. You do things. We've got some additional uh, League of Oregon cities. Those dues are going up. It's basically a calculation on the population. Population goes up, so the dues. Uh, I'm budgeting more in our office machine maintenance, which is our IT folks, because they are also going to put in a new server. One of our servers is pretty much obsolete. I need to replace it. And the nine workstations that the operating system is no longer supported. And one of the things that they do as part of their monthly thing is the patches and updates that uh, keep our units secure. And if the operating system is no longer they can't do that. So we're trying to, we're replacing actually two public works, three wastewater and two water computers this coming week. And then we're, we'll do nine more workstations in this fiscal year. And then there'll be nine more in the subsequent fiscal year. And so that'll take additional labor to provision. Apparently, you're not going paper. So your paper stock is still going up. You know, it's the budget. <laughs> I have to make 22 copies of 130 pages. <laughs> I have a quick question. Um, office machine maintenance, that's a, a good portion of that is our IT folks. So they run about uh, $7,000 a month on, on May, just a contract. I'll double check that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was part of um we approved that contract a couple years ago. I'll double check that number and see what else yeah. is in there. Um that seems really high. Well, we have a lot of things to support. I want I, to think about so I got, understand that. This location, easy. we've got fire stations. We've got the one fire station out there. We've got wastewater out there. We've got super freeze. We've got non corral All those things have system Wi-Fi. There's uh, also in this 95 is we're planning to do a Wi-Fi consolidation and what they call the callback. Is that right? Um, so uh, signal. We're going to put an antenna up on flow type and capture all of the cameras in Central Park. So once that project is done, so each one of those cameras is costing us $79 a month for Wi-Fi connection. Yeah. And so that callback project, but it also requires IT. 
but they are that's part of what's budget here is their labor to get that done because that'll be saving us instead of four or six five connections in Central Park. Four or five connections in Central Park at seventy-nine dollars a month will only be paying one shot from course. So we're working to bring that into line. But this this year has been a big year for uh, installing, I mean, just changing things, getting things up to speed. We've had them out helping us with our uh, emergency management system. So we've done a power, we powered down to see if the generator was going to come up, see if we had Wi Fi come up. So we've done a lot of extra things. Well, we well, DFN is our uh, phone and internet. Phone and internet. But so our IT folks, this tech has been our liaison with those people, helping us with that. So but through DFN, don't they provide their own IT support services for? Not for us. Not for not that level. They just provide the service for the Wi Fi itself, just the structure. And, uh, yeah, I, I would really like to see more of a breakdown on that particular line item because okay. that seems quite extensive. But it's been that way. But I know. I mean, you, but can like this, it. you can look at it all you want, but it's not going to change. Um, <laughs> it seems like there's, I don't know. Yeah, to, to clarify. Yeah, we've been managing this for several years. Yeah. To clarify, it's it, done it, way for is it so labor, years. hardware, and thought? No, I'm saying we've been doing it. For several years. Oh, yeah, labor, hardware, and software. Yeah, yeah. So it's labor, hardware, and software. So not only are they doing the monthly tasks, but they, I mean, I'm, I'm paying for new computers, but they're, you know, coming out and then work. That's included in their monthly hours. I want to run over them. And they, that's based on a project basis for us. So they charge us by the extra projects, but the normal monthly stuff is taken care of in their month, in their contract. Oh. I would suggest that Lisa might want to come in and talk to you. Absolutely. To show her where all that money is. Yeah. Absolutely. Happy to do that. Didn't we say that it's like changing from our previous one? Well, we uh, were a whole lot more secure. Yeah. And it was about just a one for one. It didn't really change the money we were putting out. It just it makes us more secure. It will actually fill out my cyber insurance application every year. We're getting good, really good support. I had a, a beep going off in my um, server room the other day. You know, we get there at seven and we're hearing this beep. And I hate to do anything in the server, right? You know, I don't want to hit the wrong switch. And so I, I called the line and it goes to the IT tech supervisor because none of the supervisors, the IT techs are in yet. And he just, Changed directions and came right on over and solved my problem, figured out what it was. I mean, he was there in 15 minutes and they're good support. They can show you everything. everything. They keep us going. And what's the library phone pay for? I'm sorry? The library phone. So we transfer money over to, we'll get to the library fund. It's under um, the special fund tab. And so we transfer out of the general fund. You can see that's something we've done. I'm going just to make sure we have a library. So, so where's the pay for it? Um, I, I don't need a lot of detail on here. Well, it's down under special funds, which is on page 62 to 75. Let's see. Okay, 76 is the library board fund, and it talks about um, contracted services. Okay. And Basically, that a library technician start with a volunteer coordinator, but that volunteer coordinator is a volunteer position. It's a library technician. Uh, or a budget for 375 alone for urban renewal for this year. And then on um, page 64. So the story talks about the police reserve and the cost for the patrol unit and with the five-year capital improvement plan there and his budget and Mike's 
talk to my talk about the fire reserve fund. And I'm going to turn it over and answer some questions. I'm going to turn the park and facility reserve and construction over to Aaron Swan. Good morning, Aaron. Before you come up, let's all take a break for about five minutes. We've been sitting here for oh, not bad. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad. So, okay, so we'll we'll resume and Aaron, please. Okay, what page are we on? We are on page 69. Park facilities are there. Okay, about this too. Let me get that screen. It's a busy it's already. It's a busy fund this year. There's a lot going on. Uh, we've already kind of covered the 20,000, 20,000, 20,000 for the police fire uh, stage cover. Notice that stage cover, there's 20 for each year on the road, and that's because we have to start planning to replace that uh, as a lifetime. Um, and there's also Pardon me? No, not the frame, the canvas part. Um, you had fun with that, didn't you? <laughs> uh, and then uh, down from there, you'll learn the mower. Uh, that's the first one on our new right away mower. Uh, HVAC's replacements, they're kind of like the stage cover. We just got to have to plan for every year out in advance because all, most of our HVAC units are at their life expectancy, somewhere beyond. They're still working and we're not going to go in and place them all until they quit. But um, but that's why that's kind of continuing on now for the next few years. And then uh, Chief Lane and Chief Mills kind of covered their fire, their seismic. Um, Grant stuff and that kind of falls into this uh, facilities reserve fund as well. Um, the other fire station, that's just extra things that are going to go along with the seismic that it makes sense to do now. Uh, Why we've got those buildings opened up and the pavement and roof is pretty all kind of the same, same program. Um, so, very busy page, a lot of money there. Um, there any questions? Why can you get a fire engine in short time and he's had to wait forever? It seems like for Who's having to wait? Oh, like, a fire guy. I can, I, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so if you remember, Larry, I came to council and asked you guys to approve a fire engine that was not going to be delivered until June. Of 25. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the company that is making that fire engine stopped making ladder trucks, so they moved their production schedule forward for us, and that's why now it's coming in August or September. Okay. Well, I was thinking you were you're getting your fire engine pretty fast, and he's. Got a mower that he's been working for for a year. <laughs> hey, mowers and police cars, I can't be <laughs> Okay, sorry. Our, our mower has just been a fiasco, but we're getting it here in the first week in June. Based on. So, right. Why, why the mower It's not a uh, everyday mower. You know, the mowers that you see running up and down high five, the ODOT John Deere mower with the Rail on the side. Mm -hmm. Pops the down the one side. Yeah, so it's all for it's for, it's not for the parks. It's not for that. It's for the right of ways and um, a little bit out of Forest Pond, but mostly along the roads and then over at the rodeo grounds are bigger expanses of ground. It's not fifty. It's a lot more than that. So that's just the first payment. That's They're right. very expensive. Let's use a, a, a tractor with a pop down to do that. I, I don't understand. It is a it is a tractor with a side flail that does pop up and down. Pardon me. Don't you have a tractor? Our tractor that we currently use for that is uh, a 1992, and it breaks down almost every time we change it. 
And yes, yeah. we, we're, we're basically replacing that unit with as close to life as we can get. And things are just so expensive now. It's yeah. just crazy. Um, so yeah. Council, uh, you're not alone. Council had a tough time with that one too. Larry's right. They don't ask the fire guys any questions, but I can answer their own. Good thing you brought the gold. That was a tough right. to swallow. But um, hey, I don't like it any more than you guys do. I hate spending money. I'm a tight wad, so it hurts every time I have to do that. <laughs> okay, any more questions for Aaron? So that on page 70 and 71 are just reflections of what was on that table. That's why I like to go to those pages for the so. Any questions? All right. Okay, so we are done with the general fun ones and you're ready to do your vote. Okay. Oh. Okay. We need a motion to appoint the general fund budget as presented uh, in the amount of fifteen million one hundred and forty thousand four hundred and ninety dollars. Make a motion to the budget for General fund budget as presented for fifteen million one hundred and forty thousand one hundred and ninety dollars. Second. I moved and seconded that we approve the general fund budget for fifteen million one hundred and forty thousand four hundred and ninety dollars. All those in favor? Any opposed? Oh, we got to a motion carries. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. There it is. Okay, with the revenue fund section, we have a couple additional items in this section this year. We have the $650,000 federal homelessness grant that we have been assured that we're getting, and we uh, have the USDA food waste mm -hmm. grant that we also needed to implement in here. Um, yes, the transient lodging tax and the library board fund are all included in here. If we go to that 650 federal homeless thing, we don't even, uh, so we projected the budget as best we know how. We know that there's garbage collection over there and insurance and the, the costs that are associated with keeping the, that thing status quo. And then anything different than that, we are planning on contracting out because we do not want to be in the business of running. That. But the question, I mean, it, it will be interesting to see when the money comes through. Uh, Pat Lynch, the Mobility Services Director, has reached out to Senator Wyden, right, and Merkley's office to find out. And they say it's out there, you need to talk to the agency. We're just not really sure when it's coming. So we put it in here because we want to be able to do something with it if we see it, but we're not sure. Yeah. Anything else. And is that a one year period? Or just we don't see it. We do not even know the duration of that. We haven't really seen those parameters. So, Tammy, if we don't receive the grant, how are we paying for those things? We're, uh, we're continuing to eke it out of our park budget. Yeah, that's how that works. Because it's an unfunded mandate. We're hoping to get some funds to continue to free up our general fund. Yeah, it is. I'll get yeah, the, the biggest problem with the homeless situation is that we have to do we have to do what the government tells us to do, but the government doesn't do us any money, give us any money. So that's yeah, what we've been stuck. And then on uh, to the USDA composting and food waste grant, basically this is a reflection of that. That is a two-year grant. Um, we have city support and direct costs built in there, and most. Most of this is just passed through. We talked to the council about that when they uh, allowed us to proceed with the application and then approve us actually administering it. And as Christy described, it's source one serenity, and we're just putting it in the budget so we can actually give the funds back out to them after we receive. So it is a pass through, and we get to keep about $9,000 towards our staff. Transient lodging tax fund. Um, we have 
change our arrangement in terms of how those awards are done. And so our budget has a little bit of change in it for that. But extra to park construction because there's a lot of work going on in parks and we're not sure where that's going to end up. And obviously, those are going to draw short. The biggest one out there is drawing short. So, other than that, not much change in that. Moving to the library, I am going to note that I'm going to change this in the approved budget from volunteer coordinator to library technician there underneath the description of the contract. Uh, we're giving her a small little bump because she's been at the same rate for a while. Lots of price changes there. Other than that, it's the same as it has been. Any questions? Larry, for the moment. Okay, we need a motion to approve the special revenue fund budget as presented in the total amount of one million four hundred eighty-two thousand three hundred and twelve dollars. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. We'll move and seconded that we approve the special revenue fund budget. One million four hundred eighty-two thousand three hundred and twelve dollars. All those in favor? You vote. Motion carries. Okay, moving on to our general obligation bond section. This bond was put together a few years ago uh, for the construction of the library building. Our property tax is the sole source of this payment, and a portion of the property tax is portioned over on the here. Designated to pay this bond back, um, and it will actually repay in 2025. It's exciting, and that money comes back into the budget. Well, um, no significant changes. The payments on the bond. In motion to approve the general obligation bond budget as presented in the total amount of seventy-two thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. Second. Second. We move and seconded that the general we approve the general obligation bond budget in the amount of seventy-two thousand five hundred dollars. All those in favor? Vote. Very well, we're going to talk about street concepts. Again, um, page eight, where I'd like to start, these were a little bit older. Um, so, once again, you have that table. If you follow that down, everything's pretty, pretty self explanatory. We're going to spend uh, 105,000 of our sidewalk money. That's on that uh, parking lot project behind backside, but it does encompass the sidewalk along North State. Shelf uh, in depth. The, the Dakota Street uh, light, as you know, ODOT kind of gave us permission to move forward with that light. And um, so that was the beginning, that 900,000 at the beginning of the engineering and all that process to start. Um, and then the Wake Street improvements, Christy spoke to that. And that would be um, if we get the grant, you know, uh, hopefully we do. But because uh, we started, got the engineering done on that, you know, so that'll be contingent on that. Downtown parking lot, that's more of that paper money will come out of there. North Grove, I'm going to do a grind and an inlay. North Grove is one of our worst. Uh, it's a good street, but it's come apart. So that needs to be taken care of. Um, and then uh, pavement management, we've got some extra pavement money. Um, it's time to repair. And so um, if you go to the next page of materials and services, uh, we try to keep it pretty tight. Once again, you'll see a, a jump in street maintenance. 
40,000 and pavements have just gotten really, really expensive. You know, if you do those same patches we were doing a couple of years ago, it's almost doubled. Um, so, I kind of like our gas. <laughs> yeah, like, every, like yeah, exactly, like everything else. Um, anyway, there's no other real significant changes um, on that page. Does anybody have any questions on the table on 80 or on 81? Oh, 82 bicycle foot caps, nothing going on there. I have a question on 82. Okay. This is a rare thing for government. This is the second year in a row we have money allocated we're not spending. Is there a reason why we're not spending the money on bicycle foot caps for the second year in a row? Um, Do you need ideas? Um, well, I don't know. Uh, I can't give you a good answer other than we just don't have a, uh, a project that we can make to continue that trail. Currently, or you know, it's, you might have. Yeah. Oh, that's I right. Can, yeah, okay. So Wade Street is going to have a. It can't have a regular sidewalk, so it's going to have a, a separate walking bicycle path, bridge, and everything. So we'll be responsible for that. Really, the next subject. Like the right. Setup. Well, that's true. We're going to. That Wake Street is till the next budget. Now, when you talk about the bridge, this is a small amount. Of right, but we'll just throw it in. So, it would be combined with other funds. Could we make suggestions for less expensive things? We're always happy to hear suggestions and um, try to incorporate those if they work. You know. Well, so long as they stay within the confines of our, uh, you know, master plan. So, but uh, yeah, absolutely. In fact, I think we've we've had some years where we thought, well, what are we going to do with it? But we've been kind of saving this for this Wait Street project for a uh, Safe Routes to Schools grant, sure. and it's going to be part of a match with a little over three some million dollars that we're going to get. If you've been down Wake Street, you understand it is taking your life in your own hands. <laughs> well, way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it'll take you across. You're only going to be able to do one side. This is going to help pay for that and uh, go go uh, cross that bridge. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Reconstruction fund. Um, you'll see those same things reflected on that table. Uh, there's 900,000 for the Dakota and the 1.2 for weight, and uh, the add up to that same. Questions? Engineering part of the portal. Mm -hmm. Do they do you have any access to it all? Um, I think that would be a long process. <laughs> anyway, if there are any questions. Okay, we need a motion to approve the street funds budget as presented in the total amount of four million three hundred and seven thousand seven hundred dollars. Okay. I'll make a motion. Yep. Approve and seconded that we approve the street funds budget for four million three hundred and seven thousand seven hundred dollars. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Budget committee for our water funds in the meeting. I wanted it. So, start that's on page 87. But 
Materials and services. And um, there are some changes here. We're going to spend hopefully less on chemicals because we bought those solar V mixers up there. And also, we're going to have to run Cooper as long this year. We're going to be running non for out because it's cheaper, less chemicals out there. Cooper Creek plant maintenance jumps up. 20,000, we're going to buy some pumps for uh, backups to be on the shelves. Those pumps are kind of starting to go, uh, become less reliable, They're very expensive. Um, engineering services, um, you'll see there's a significant jump there. We're looking into our inner tie with Umpot Basin or um, exploring ways to utilize our water items for future use. Currently, we have enough water for everybody and everything, but um, we keep growing at this rate, we are going to need to uh, utilize that water. So that's a little jump. So we have a water right, but we could work with somebody so that that could be put together in order to get the water from the river over here. Right. Currently, um, I'm um, Claude Basin's using our water right. We gave them our, we had to give it to them. But we kind of made a deal with them. They could use it. And then if we want to, we can buy on Wilbur and get water from them. Probably the least expensive way to get that water. So hired the engineering firm to kind of put together a plan and a prospectus. And, what happens if we have online uh, they can pay their bills they can either set up an express or they can call with the phone and pay for pizza and that has become a very popular option so our visa fees and they're split between water and wastewater Paying credit cards is expensive. I know. I'm sure they would tell you that that should already be included. Um, okay. So that's page 88. Any questions? Any other questions? Then you uh, hop over to 89 and, and you get into our capital improvement uh, plan there. And um, so we have some reservoir improvements that you see and non corral improvement. That's kind of finishing up our project. Stuff that's going to fall on us new pavement, new roof, new patch to lower stuff. There is a water line project that they're kind of working on, um, engineering portion in the alley to reverse the uh, upquad and land it in the alley to reverse the And um, then you'll see that our AMI water system, that's 400,000. And that is something we're looking into. We're looking into upgrading our, our uh, Meter technology so that we don't have to read them every month or pay some. We're not sure if we're going to pull the trigger, but it's in this budget. Well, you could pay a lot of people $400,000. That's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it, it's more than just getting them read, it, it makes it the technology comes right in. We can have interactive meters, we can turn off people that. Because they usually don't pay their bill, and um, it's just and it's instantaneous, it sends that information constantly. So we're we're interested in it, but it is costly, and we're trying to balance that out. Anyway, so that's the uh, capital improvement plan. Questions there? Questions? Yes. The city applied for some contingencies 
system for the water system. I think for the county of the state about a month or two ago, if a if power went out for the city, I think it was stated that oh, we have two days of water. It was it was the county. And it was that big on that. Yeah, so uh, we we have generators at our plants. They'll continue to provide water for everybody in the city that's in our lower our regular main system. But we have these higher systems where the reservoirs are smaller. And they feed certain high neighborhoods. And so our grant that we put in for was to have a mobile generator where we could go around to these pump stations that pump up to this higher system. And, um, and pump water up there on an interval, some process and power that for a period of time. Uh, we did not receive so there are certain um, areas in town that are, are a little bit vulnerable. Um, but, um, you know, hopefully the power rapid don't last that long. But there are some of those upper level systems that. And is it true if those power outages do last, the fire hydrants don't get water supply? In those upper reaches. <laughs> Except we do have a mobile generator we could use if we needed to. But it's only one, so it's stretched pretty thin. We were trying to get a grant to get enough to immediately. It's actually the mayor's total fault. Uh, because wow. they live up there and they couldn't get water. So we scrambled and got it. She wasn't the mayor at the time. We scrambled and got a generator that could go out and pump water up into their reservoir. But that worked for everybody. Uh, but we'd be better off if we had two or three of them so we could uh, do a quick response process instead of just... I have a lot of water in storage. <laughs> do you really? <laughs> yes, do I. <laughs> okay, so next page, water construction. Well, once again, those things are reflected uh, in the table in the previous page. We do have some more expenditures, cathodic protection, that's about the same. Our regular improvements down, mainline improvements up that same 160 on the alley project. And the plan improvements, that's just to finish up. So, any questions on page 19? The reserve fund. This is legal. Ninety-two water debt service fund. You see those debt service? Those are just all the little, all the loans that we've taken out over the years to keep this infrastructure going, and, and some of them are getting close to being paid off. That's the total. Of this. No further questions. Okay. In motion to approve the water funds budget as presented and the total amount of seven million five hundred sixty-two thousand three hundred dollars. I move the motion to approve for seven million five hundred sixty-two thousand three hundred for the water funds. I moved and seconded that we approve the water funds budget seven billion five hundred sixty-two thousand three hundred. All those in favor? Oh, raise your hand. <laughs> Any opposed? No. Okay. Moving on to wastewater. Um, start on page ninety-five. Material services. Um, so just uh, changes of no chemicals have gone up at the wastewater plant. And plus, we may have to go to correspond with a little more, and that costs us some dechlorination uh, chemicals. So you see a little jump there. Uh, computer maintenance, you see a really big jump, and that's uh, we're gonna, we have to buy a complicated SCADA system computer that kind of ties all of our all of our stuff together the stations and the recycled water stations and all that and so there's a 
pretty healthy people to purchase. Their um, engineering's a little bump. We have to do a master plan this year. Uh, info and infiltration is another kind of a job. And it is so costly to slip line and repair these sewer lines now that uh, that's just an absolutely fair minimum. Um, once again, I don't like spending money to do but all that's going to continue to go up. Uh, a second, in. does everybody understand what inflow and infiltration is? Anybody here does not want to have it explained or you're all on board? I'm on board. Mm -hmm. All right. I can real quickly. Mary. Well, I know. I just was cracked by surprise. And uh, you have to stop that from happening because in the winter, our uh, daily flow goes from about 700,000 gallons to four, five, six, seven million a day. That's all that extra groundwater coming into our system. So, from, the, from the rainfall? Yeah, from just groundwater, rainfall, and the groundwater. Some surface that's inflow and then infiltration. And um, you said we go through the roof. So. It's an old system and we have to keep kind of repairing it. So, our system? Yeah. Never really can't. We need it. Um, we, uh, we just keep working on it, but um, there's miles and miles and miles yeah. of this stuff. So, about the time we get close to thinking of Mercado, now some other issues. So, uh, plant maintenance, um, where do you need spare backwash pumps, a little reflection there. Um, and then utility prep down at the bottom, that's a notable increase. That's in the office. Just put that in the building. Your town got more Okay. Uh, you go to page 99. My capital improvement um, table that I like so much. Uh, raise it all out. The uh, wastewater is getting pick up this year. We've got that master plan uh, in the works. We're going to do an upgrade at the church thrift station, church street thrift station. And um, we have everything on there. And then that's reflected. Depth service on page 101. Same as the uh, on the, in the water fund, we've just done all these projects and our money from the view and the USB and all these other places, and we just can't back. Questions? Chris Water? Right, he's tough. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. Motion to approve uh, wastewater fund budget as presented in the total amount of $9,131,700. Motion to approve the wastewater fund budget in the amount of $9,131,700. Second. seconded that we approve the wastewater fund budget. As presented, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Moving on to public works operations. Um, page 105. Um, I normally don't talk about that upper part, but you can see that potential new. Um, Parks for in the towering wave. So, if you go to materials and services, see that we kept everything pretty even this year. Uh, in fact, yeah, little drops, no, no real increases there. Next page, 106. Uh, I'm going to try to buy a. Pick up. It's 
It's actually a one-time pickup flat bed of what we're after this year. That's why it's a little more, a little more money than our average um, uh, past time. That's all the do um, in the capital. Reflecting in the next page. Questions? I have yeah. a, is, oh, that, is that car going to be electric? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> we need to laugh. There it is. We have a motion to approve the public works funds budget as intended for about two million to one four. Two million four hundred ninety thousand two hundred fifty dollars. That makes. I'll make a motion to approve public works funds for two million four hundred ninety thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Second. Move and seconded that we approve the public works fund, public works fund budget as presented. All those in favor? Be opposed. First. I think we just have a bunch of motions of approval. Okay, now you've got the total budget, I believe, that you're going to approve. Yeah, approve the budget, approve the levy, the city. Oh, yeah. Okay. No. Oh, good. You know, a motion to approve the public books, sorry. A uh, motion to approve the budget as presented in the total amount of $40,187,250. Uh, what page? Is it? Yeah. Well, that's in my notes. Oh, it's just in <laughs> I make a motion we approve the entire budget for forty million one hundred eighty-seven two hundred fifty-two. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay. Second. Moved and seconded that we approve the budget as presented. <laughs> for forty million one hundred eighty-seven thousand two hundred fifty-three dollars. All those in favor? <laughs> Any opposed? $40 million. Well, at least Rose works is over $100 million. It should. Motion, uh, we need a motion to approve the levying of the city's general operating property tax rate of Five dollars point six three three five cents per thousand dollars of assessment. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the levying of the city's general operating property property tax rate. All those in favor? Any opposed? <laughs> you just had to have one, right? Yeah. It's the same as it was last year. Okay, a motion to levy property taxes to pay the general obligation bonds exempt from property tax property tax limitation in the amount of sixty six thousand dollars. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they moved and seconded to levy property taxes to pay for the general obligation bonds exempt from property tax limitation in the amount of $66,000. All those in favor? Let me explain that for Gary. So, when you go out for a vote and the people vote for it, it doesn't Fit within it doesn't have to fit within the ten dollar maximum cap that uh, local governments can charge. Okay. That cleared it up. We need a motion to approve the use of state shared revenues for the purposes of. For, sorry, approve the use of state shared revenues for the purposes proposed in the budget, including but not limited to police, fire. 
streets and planning services. I second that. They moved and seconded to approve the use of state shared revenue. All those in favor? Any opposed? Gentlemen? Yes. Right. Debbie wants to tell us a little bit about who's going to come 